Welcome to the Building Materials Sales and Marketing Podcast, presented by Mark Mitchell, a sales and marketing consultant who specializes in helping building materials companies overcome difficult sales problems. Mark is the author of the book, Building Materials Channel Marketing, and a frequent speaker at industry events. Hello, this is Mark Mitchell from Wizard Strategy. Thanks for joining me today. In this episode, I'd like to talk about the importance of making customers feel important. Early in my career, I met, or I worked, had the pleasure of working with a really amazing copywriter. He, he just was amazing what he could do with words, but what he really did was he understood and he taught me, he said, Mark, whenever I go to write something, whenever I go to put something together, I have a visual image of the customer and tattooed on their forehead are the initials M-M-F-I, or the letters M-M-F-I. And I said, what's that mean? And he said, make me feel important. And that always stuck with me through my whole career about you know, how do you make the other person feel important? And it's not about kissing their ass or uh, things like that. It's just simply about giving them respect, acknowledging them, uh, showing them that you respect them. And that, that, always, that always stuck with me. And I, I watch today as uh, particularly as we're evolving, continue to evolve from what I'll call traditional sales and marketing, where you went and you got a meeting with a customer, you met with a customer at their office, sat across the desk from them, Perhaps you took them to lunch or a dinner or something, and you were able face to face to a good a good salesperson was able face to face to make the customer feel important. And now that we have things uh, digital marketing or just the fact that you're we don't have as many salespeople or you have more customers to cover, that's changing, and it may seem harder to make uh, reach out to that customer and make them feel important. But if you look at it the other way, the beauty is that it's now actually easier to reach more customers and make them feel important. And you now can get your marketing department can also be involved in making the customer feel important. It doesn't all fall on the shoulders of the individual salesperson. And some examples I, I want to talk to you. First of all, I want to talk about existing customers. And one of the First things, of course, is to just have knowledge about that particular customer. In the old days, we used to get that knowledge by going to their office and looking behind them at where they went to college or whether they like to go fishing or they have two daughters or a dog or whatever things, what books they read. You could learn a lot about your customer by just being in their workspace and that either one happens less frequently to a lot less frequently today, or the other is maybe our workspaces are a lot more antiseptic today than uh, the, a cubicle perhaps doesn't have uh, what the corner office used to have. There isn't a credenza behind the desk. Uh, maybe as many things aren't on the wall. But in today's world, your customers who are on social media a lot of them are, and, and we could say some of them, some of them aren't, but a lot of them are. And they may be on Facebook, they might be on Instagram, they might be on YouTube, they might be on Twitter, LinkedIn, many of these different things. And if you connect or follow them on any of their social media channels, you that's where you start to pick up that same knowledge about just who they are. And with the great tools we have today, like Salesforce, what a great way for you to put in more information about the customer. And, and I, I keep always going back to this Harvey McKay, who um, was a, owned an envelope company years ago in Minneapolis, and he had people on the telephone calling up cold calling companies and selling them envelopes. I can't imagine of a more challenging job uh, trying to sell envelopes to business owners what a commodity. Who needs envelopes? Uh, what's different about an envelope? How, how challenging? And one of the ways he did it in one of his, he's written several books and these were all in 20 plus years ago. 
But I think one of them was like how to swim with the sharks without being eaten alive. And in there, I think he talks about, I think it's called the McKay 66. And he would have each of his salespeople, in those days, they were salespeople on a telephone, calling people and selling them envelopes. But with each customer, he had a form that was the McKay 66. This is before Salesforce. And the goal of every salesperson was to know 66 things about each customer, where they went to college, where their next vacation is going to be, if they're married, what's their anniversary, their birthday, what's their dog's name, and on and on. And having that information enabled them to very easily make the customer feel important. And in each call, they, they weren't trying to sit down and, and now you have to answer these 66 things. They were just trying to gain another piece of information with each interaction. And I think, you know, you can understand the value of having that information and what great ways it is to, to start and continue conversations. And what he found quickly was his salespeople, when they would call back up after, you know, the second or third call, well, the person wanted to talk to Susie from McKay Envelope because she was going to ask him about his fishing trip. Okay. Oh, and yeah, I do need some envelopes. And so just that, you know, it's so easy to think about business as just a dollars and cents. I got a product, I got a price, you have a need, now what's the deal? Um, but there's still, even in today's world where maybe we don't see each other face to face as much, there's still that that human appreciation of you you know me, uh, you know things about me and you care and you're interested in those, the things that are important to me. And so I think the first thing, first way that I recommend it is just to make sure that you are using uh, social media to learn as much about your customers as you can. The second part to do is uh, in social media is to take just a few minutes, you know, my big, you know, if I were to pick one, I would say LinkedIn. But there are customers I know that, that are on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or Twitter. I don't frankly understand Twitter, but I know customers that are on Twitter every day. But I see the majority of them are on LinkedIn from a business standpoint. And on LinkedIn, it will be something as, as you know, seemingly unimportant as it will say, it is, you know, Joe Smith's birthday today. Okay. You know, and you can go on there and it will say it's Joe Smith's birthday and you can just say happy birthday, Joe. And you'll be amazed that over half the time, Joe will come back and say thanks. Okay? And uh, you may want to use that to start a conversation. You may just want to put that little, little like putting a few pennies in your piggy bank of the relationship. If Joe shares something or if Joe gets a promotion or Joe has a work anniversary, those are also opportune times to just say congratulations. If Joe shares, like here is a big customer event, here is a new project we just completed, if you just click like, they will notice that. If you take it a step further and, and once again offer a comment, or maybe they share something that you think is uh, worth sharing to the rest of your followers. If you share it, they will notice all of these things and, you know, once again, makes them feel important, puts you a few notches above other people that they don't know as well or that they perceive don't really know them or care about them. The next way uh, that I find is very powerful, you can't do this with everybody, so you kind of have to maybe take your top 10 customers or something, and that is to at least once a year, maybe a little more often, but, you know, ask them, hey, I'd like to know how are we doing as a company or how am I doing and how are we doing? Okay. Is there things that we could do better? What are they? And then to ask them, you know, if there was uh, anything that could be done, what would you like, even if it's not possible, but what, what would be, you know, your dream, you know, the dream change you would like to see in, in how we do things. And that's amazing. Well, one's very powerful because it shows that you care Number two, it shows that you are committed to continuing to improve uh, based on their measure of improvement, not just yours. The next area is to be aware of what are their issues, like just in not regard to your product or your how you're doing or so forth. But, you know, if they're an architect, if they're a home builder, if they're a contractor, 
to be aware of how is business, what challenges are they facing. Don't just take the, oh, everything's great or we're doing fantastic. Dig a little deeper until you find, you know, what are, what are the challenges they're facing? What are their goals for the next year? Even if they have nothing to do with you or, or your business or what you sell. And just make a note of that. And then, you know, maybe six weeks, three months later, when you, you know, check back with them, hey, how are you doing about this? Or if you want to take it to the next level, if you happen to notice an article, newsletter, a blog post, anything uh, that has to do with that subject, share it with them. Whether it's not, whether you share it on social media, send it as an email, they will go, wow, you know, they remembered that I was concerned about the uh, cost of this raw material or this competitor or how this code's going to change. And wow, he sent me this information. He remembered. And this is really important. You don't want to assume everybody is so busy today. They don't have time to read. They don't have time to keep up with information. And they depend on others to, if you will, curate content for them, find articles of interest and send them to them. They're very used to getting articles that are basically sales pitches. But when you are trying to send them something that will help them solve a problem, it may have nothing to do with your business. They notice that and will really appreciate that. Another one that I love to do is I, I call it put the CEO to work. OK, so every customer you know, likes to feel one, one of the way they all like to feel important. But one of the other ways they feel important is if to feel important to a, a higher level executive within your company. And so, you know, if you can get your CEO, your VP of sales, your president, whatever, to uh, pick up the phone and call the customer and ask them how you're doing and tell them how much you appreciate the business, whatever they tell them, it will be like, wow, I never hear from somebody at that level. Okay. For most customers, I'm, you know, your biggest customers, I'm sure the senior people are connected with them, but it's those, it's those middle level customers and smaller customers that it will really make an impression with them. So those are the, the kinds of things that I would do with uh, existing customers. Now, how to make new customers feel important is just as maybe even more important. What I see so frequently is a salesperson and or a company works really hard to convert a customer to make a sale. And then they kind of like assume that their job is done. And it's almost like in its worst case, it's like they made the sale and they've treated the customer really well. It's kind of like they've given them five-star level hotel service and support. Everything's been just, wow, this is a great company to deal with. And now I've placed the order or the first interaction is now really happening. And now it's kind of like they, they're told to go to the Department of Motor Vehicles to deal with your company. And even if it goes smoothly, even if you have excellent processes, they are different than the processes the customer is used to getting. So it's very important to, once again, about making the customer feel important. And, and it's more than that, but to have an onboarding process. And if your company doesn't have one, uh, you as a salesperson should take it on yourself <laughs> in which you should walk them through, hold their hands on those first, certainly the first order and maybe the first few orders. And whether it's introducing them to the pricing person, introducing them to the accounts payable person, introducing them to the shipping person by phone, by email, uh, whatever it takes so that uh, they feel connected to your company and they feel like uh, there's people there that really care and there's people they can reach out to if they have a question, which they will, because once again, you operate differently than uh, your competitor that they used to buy from. So I think, you know, if you just step back, that idea about, uh, it's always stuck in my mind, but the idea of having MMFI tattooed on the customer's forehead, make me feel important, always makes me step back and think about, you know, how can I make this person feel important? Once again, not as a way of kissing their ass or something, but a way of uh, getting to know them better and to understand how we can better meet their needs when I start from that perspective versus I start from, I've got the best product, I've got the best price, now where's the order? And so I think, I think you'd be amazed at the uh, response that you get when you have that attitude. 
And one one final thing in, in this area of social media, it seems like there's a percentage of people who uh, embrace social media, and then there's a percentage of people who resist it. And for the people who resist it, I just, I, I tell you that your customers are watching it. They're monitoring it. I've had presidents of companies call me and say, Mark, this large builder in California called me and wondered why our sales rep never likes any of their social media posts. Okay. That, I mean, you know, so, it, you know, trust me, if it, whether it's the largest general contractors, there's a person there monitoring social media and reporting who's doing what. And they, there's, they notice like, oh, we buy a lot from this company, but they never, they don't follow us. They don't like us. They don't comment. They don't share. And unfortunately that, or fortunately or unfortunately, it, it falls, it can fall a lot on the individual sales rep. So whatever you believe about social media, uh, it certainly isn't the end all. It, you, you won't go out of business or fail if you don't use social media, but it is, it is a great way to once again, make the customer feel important, uh, make your job easier and grow your business. So I hope this has been helpful. And uh, if you have any suggestions, please uh, let me know. And if you, if any future subjects you'd like me to cover. And also, if you found this to be a value, I hope that you will share this with uh, others uh, in your organization. And if you feel that uh, your company could benefit from a little uh, outside thinking to uh, uh, help you uh, get past any areas where you're stuck or any hurdles you're facing, please reach out to me. I look forward to uh, sharing with you in a future episode. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Mark Mitchell on building materials, sales and marketing. We hope he gave you some fresh perspectives on how to grow your sales and will listen to future episodes. 